Hello every PC gaming buddy! If you're a PC gamer and you're planning to play Skyrim, then these videos are for you. So I take you through a series of critical optimizations in order for your PC to totally own Elder Scrolls V Skyrim at higher graphic settings and higher frame rates. Now this is a two-part series and it's important that you complete my recommendations in both videos since every PC gamer should be familiar with all of these procedures. The many optimizations in these videos should cover both Windows Vista 32-bit or 64-bit and Windows 7 32-bit or 64-bit. And for reference, my computer is running Windows 7 64-bit. Now, in this first video, we will cover the following. How to update your video card with the latest video drivers, whether you're using NVIDIA GeForce or AMD Radeon cards. And then how to conduct a full RAM and memory test in Windows then how to determine whether to buy and install more RAM, how to optimize your virtual memory settings in Windows, then how to install MSI Afterburner, which is a graphics hardware monitoring tool, and finally how to set up System Restore and create a restore point, which is very important. Then, part two will cover very important procedures as well. I'll take you through an extremely comprehensive malware removal exercise, and then we'll also overclock your graphics card at that point, or determine whether you should just buy a new one. And last, but most certainly not least, I'll show you the best tool to defragment your hard drive. All right, let's start with the first and most important step, which is to upgrade your graphics drivers. And why is it the most important step? Well, you can't expect a game to perform properly if you're running outdated graphics drivers. So it turns out that mine is out of date too, so we're going to go through this exercise together. So if you're on GeForce, follow the GeForce link in the description. And if you're uh, running a AMD Radeon card, then follow that, that link. Uh, we're gonna go through the GeForce. So, Make sure if you're running GeForce that you select your exact card and your right operating system, including whether it's a 32-bit or a 64-bit system, and then you start the search. It will give you the latest driver, which was updated just a few weeks ago, Monday, October the 24th. And now I'm going to agree and download it. And just before it finishes downloading, take note of the actual version number. Uh, ours is 285.62. And there, once it's installed, or once it's downloaded, then go ahead and install it. Um, it's a very uh, easy install. And also the AMD, the Radeon uh, drivers are also an easy install. And by the way, you might be wondering, why would I go through this, this step? It seems stupid and elementary. Well, you'd be surprised how many people are running outdated graphics cards. And that's exactly why we're doing this. In both of these installations for GeForce and uh, the Radeon cards, it's best to just use the standard install, and that's what it's going to do. Now it'll spend about uh, three minutes installing it, and your screen will flicker a few times, and that's just because it's installing a new driver, so there's nothing to worry about. And then when it's done, then just verify that it installed properly with the correct version number. Now, once you're done with that, you can actually go into the NVIDIA control panel, which you find in the Windows control panel. Um, just look around and you'll find it. Uh, then you can take a look at your global settings and um, determine if you want to uh, mess with those at all. You can take a look at my settings and I'll scroll through them and um, I do recommend these if your graphics card can handle it. If you've got a 500 series GeForce GTX then do that. Uh, ambient occlusion I always have set to quality uh, because it looks good. It makes uh, every game look a little bit better. Um, now there, you can go into the individual program settings and look for Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, but there's something slightly disturbing about the newest um, graphics driver from NVIDIA. There's no Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. There is Morrowind and Oblivion, but not Skyrim yet. Um, so uh, I'm going to watch for a beta driver or a newly updated driver that will actually support that. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue, but it's always good to have a specific profile for the game that you're going to be playing. All right, then the next step we're going to do is to perform a memory test, whether you're in Windows Vista or Windows 7. And in order to do that, I added a link in the description of this video that takes you to this forum, and it gives you a step-by-step -step, um, procedure on how to do that. And this, the memory test actually happens during uh, the Windows boot sequence, not, in, not actually right here on the desktop. So you actually have to schedule it, and it shows you how to do that. It's quite simple. 
uh, you just click start and then MD sketch and I've, you can see it in the forums and I'll type it out in the description uh, and then it gives you two options restart now and check for problems or check for problems the next time I start my computer well you should restart now and check for problems if you're doing it uh, but I'm just gonna do this because I need to continue narrating and yes see then it says it was it was scheduled and it's going to run the next time I boot my computer up which is what I needed to do and this is what it will look like once um, you restart um, and hopefully your the end result will say no problems have been detected so but if there were problems detected then you're going to have to buy uh, it's most it's best to buy a new dim which is the type of RAM that you most likely have in your system now the next thing we're going to talk about is the physical RAM in your rig and now we're going to determine whether you should upgrade your RAM. First of all, I highly recommend 8 gigs of RAM for Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Uh, most of you will probably have 4 gigs. You absolutely need 4 gigs to run this game, otherwise you're, it's going to stutter and the performance will be terrible. Um, if you do have 4 gigs of RAM, you most likely have a 2 gig and 2 gig configuration. Um, Many motherboards have four DIMM slots, but some motherboards have three and some only have two, unfortunately. Um, and if you only have two and they're both uh, two gig um, DIMMs for a total of four gigabytes, then you can't upgrade. You have to replace them entirely. So if you are willing to <laughs> rip your rig open and uh, find your dim slots and then take a look at how your uh, RAM is configured then you can do that but that's outside the scope of this video uh, the important thing to, to know is uh, determine is how many dim slots you have and how many of those are taken up and how much memory you have if you have four gigs and four dim slots that's good because you can buy four more gigs of RAM and the, the the RAM comes in packages of um, usually in pairs of two uh, in other words if you buy four more gigs you'll get two individual DIMM chips that are two gigabytes each and that's just a better way to run memory on a motherboard so like I said um, make sure it's best if you have eight gigs of RAM however you need to upgrade it you know uh, check with friends uh, that that might know a little bit about how to install RAM but, but whatever configuration you wind up with just make sure that it matches one of those um, two configurations that I typed up in the captions over to the left that you just saw a little while ago now the next thing we're going to do is change your virtual memory settings this is a very important step don't forget it we're going to go to computer and then right click in properties and then you go to advanced system settings uh, by the way this should be the same in Vista or Windows 7 uh, then you go into the advanced tab uh, then look for performance which says visual effects memory usage and virtual memory and then click settings and we have to go into another tab which is the advanced tab and there we go and uh, you'll see your virtual memory oh by the way um, if it says processor scheduling make sure you adjust for better performance of programs not background services okay so virtual memory um, it says the total paging file size for all drives is four gigs I'll explain what virtual memory is virtual memory is much like those dim chips that we just talked about except the computer uses your hard drive as memory in addition to your RAM chips so now we're gonna click change this is the important step if you only have one drive um, then there's only going to be one drive here. I happen to have two drives, but we're not going to go into that. We're just going to focus on setting it for one drive. Um, we are going to override whatever um, uh, the system managed size is, and we're going to choose a custom size. Uh, if this is checked, you have to uncheck it, see? So you can get down here. Now, 
Here's how you set the initial size and maximum size. You should set it to one and a half times what how much RAM you have in your system. I currently have four gigs of RAM in my system, so I'm going to set it to, yeah, just a little over. <laughs> I'm actually going to set it to 6130, and that's roughly one and a half times how much I have in my um, computer. I want you to set the initial size and the maximum size to exactly the same value in megabytes so that Windows doesn't move and shift around the size of the page file which can cause problems and then set it. Now there are some you might see some recommendations online that says oh no you should just disable the paging file which would be right here. Don't do it. You need uh, virtual memory even if you have tons of RAM even if you have 16 gigs of RAM you should still have virtual memory uh, yes it, it eats up a little bit of your hard drive but that's not a big deal um, applications will perform better games will perform better because a lot of games require its own paging file in addition to the paging file that Windows creates here so remember uh, please use these settings if you have four gigs if you have eight gigs of RAM there should be something like like this 12 uh, like 12.2 gigs but I'm going to keep it like this for now all right now the next piece of software we're going to install is MSI Afterburner. It's based on Riva Tuner, and this is the uh, graphics card performance booster, and it's like a graphics monitoring tool. The reason we're going to download and install this is so you can monitor both the temperature of your graphics card and the frame rate while you're inside a game. Okay, so uh, I gave you the link in the description, so you just have to download it. Uh, once you've downloaded it, uh, here, let's go to here, and then you have to extract it yeah because um, it's a zip file so uh, I want you don't use combustor that's a benchmarking utility it's called afterburner not the combustor so click afterburner and then it's gonna say extract all yeah sure you know just let it extract it to your uh, well I already did it once so that's why this came up it'll extract it into your uh, downloads folder uh, or the same folder where it was and once it does that Let's wait for it to finish. Oh, come on. There we go. And now it gives you this folder. And again, don't set up Combustor. I don't know why they do this. This is kind of ridiculous that they give you both of them. Set up the Afterburner right here, MSI Afterburner. And then you say, welcome to the Afterburner Setup Wizard. Um, and you go through this. Um, I have to show you a hook error you might get while you're installing this. Just let it do whatever it wants. You have the standard. There, you might get this. Um, um, error opening file for writing. If you get that, just ignore it. Um, it never caused a problem for me before. And it will install it. And then it'll ask you, do you want to reboot now or later? Well, you want to reboot now so you can see uh, it working. And then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so once you've installed MSI Afterburner, you should have two icons in your system tray. The first one is MSI Afterburner, and the next one is called uh, the on-screen display, and we'll get to that in a minute. So I wanted to direct your attention to this. First of all, this is your uh, system monitor that shows you different graphs with uh, different criteria like the GPU temperature, the frame rate. You know, you can watch those real time on your desktop, but what we really want is for those to show up in your game. Uh, and I'll show you that icon next. By the way, you see these over here? Don't change anything. We're not going to overclock your graphics card here. I know it looks tempting and it's kind of disturbing how <laughs> how tempting this looks to just drag and back and forth, but if you think you've accidentally done something like oops then just click reset which is this middle button here and it goes and it restores them back to your control panel settings okay now let's go to on-screen display this feature is what adds the different data points to your game as an on-screen display in like an upper right hand corner or you can choose upper left too see I chose upper right and you can mess with the colors and stuff um, but if you want to, you can choose which data points you want to add to the on-screen display. Um, and I'll show you that now. Uh, by the way, set this to on, set on-screen display support to on. Now let's minimize that and we'll go back to this 
uh, whether it's detached or not, that's fine. See, now we're going to right click in properties and right in this monitoring tab, uh, this is where you choose which ones you want to be on the on-screen display. I just choose, you know, the GPU temperature and the frame rate and you, there's the button right here. See, if you uncheck it, then see now the frame rate won't show up, but then you have to, for each one of these, you have to choose what you want to uh, appear. Okay, and that's um, MSI Afterburner. And then you can go into a game and check and make sure that it's working. Well, we ran out of time in this video, so we'll start part two with creating a system restore point in Windows. So if you liked this, then you can subscribe to my channel and then you'll get all of these videos in your inbox. And uh, go ahead and click the like button if you liked it. And please share it with all of your friends who plan to play Skyrim on the PC. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.